boy, oh boy, oh boy. What a nightmare in Canada today. You thought that the state of our economy was bad. Well, it just got worse. Today was the federal budget announcement, and Chrystia Freeland has bent over the entire country and stuck it in the rear end and did not lube it up. In other words, we're fucked. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I want to encourage everyone to smash the like button. I know it's very difficult. And a lot of you are probably borderline depressed, if not extremely sad by this news. But still, don't take it out on me. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't yet already. And I hope you consider turning post notifications on so you can be notified of uh, upcoming videos, especially breaking news ones like this. Canada, uh, in the new budget, in Chrystia Freeland's new budget, the same woman who has said so famously in the past that budgets will balance themselves, has decided that over the next five years, what I thought before, before the, this was announced, I, I estimated maybe five, ten billion dollars. Oh no, 57 billion dollars over the next five years is what Canada is doing. And they've got new taxes coming out. They've got new like privacy laws for employer to employee. There is so much to cover. So I really encourage you guys to stick around for this entire video because you just need to know this. You really need to know this. It is brutal. So let's start off with uh, global news here that says there's some key numbers from the Liberal government uh, in their federal budget. All right. Here are some key numbers from the Liberal budget. $535 billion. Total government spending over the 2024-2025 fiscal year. $39.8 billion. The total deficit just shy of $40 billion projection in the fall economic statement. $11.5 billion. The amount of new spending this year. $8.5 billion. What's been spent? spent to spur new housing 3.87 million the number of new homes the government says it will build in the next what we 2024 so in the next seven years 2.6 billion well what the liberals say will go towards generational fairness to ease education costs and create new job opportunities for younger Canadians. Almost 20 billion. The amount of revenue Ottawa expects to get over five years of the targeted changes to capital gains taxes. That's right. They're, they're taxing capital gains. And then there's all these new wealth taxes. And it's just, it's insane. 1.5 billion. The five year cost of universal coverage of contraceptives and diabetes medicine and supplies over the next five years. 1.7 billion. What Ottawa thinks it will get in five years from an increase to the uh, to the tax of tobacco products. 8.1 billion to boost Canada's defense budget over the next five years, even though we always fail extremely short of our NATO uh fiduciary responsibilities 1.76 a percentage of gdp that defense spending will account for by 2030 just shy of the two percent nato target bro i'm surprised we haven't been kicked out of nato yet like 1.76 is probably the closest percentage of our gdp that has been allocated to our defense when nato clearly states every country in nato needs to hit two percent canada is failing and failing and failing year over year and look how much money we're spending everywhere if i were nato if i were in charge of nato i'd say canada uh you don't have very long to sort your shit out and actually contribute before you're kicked out I mean, that, that just, I, that sounds like it sucks and it does to be kicked out of NATO. Absolutely. But what are we actually contributing? We're not even meeting our target. 50, the number of times the word fairness appears in the budget document. That's right. And 400, they left this out of global news, but 400 is the amount of pages the new budget is. It's just, it's insane, guys. It's insane. So we're going to now take a deeper dive into all of these numbers. And if you're confused by all these numbers, it's, it's very much join everybody. There are so many billions of dollars of spending, just massive amounts of spending and all this carbon tax money that they're getting, all the wealth tax, all the capital gains tax. To sum it up, if, you're, if there's one takeaway, I'm going to put it now instead at the end of the video. If there's one takeaway from the state of Canada, it's let's use a hierarchy, okay? If you don't make a lot of money in Canada, that's good. The government wants you to rely on them for handouts. If you make too much money, the government is going to take it 
pretty much all of it so that you're bumped down into the middle lower class that's where the government wants you they're trying to erase a, a higher class and they're trying to kill off a bunch of people that are all like lower class right through incentives like made you can't pay your rent use made you're feeling anxious you're a little sad about the cost of living use made real things that have happened in canada by the way i'm not just trying to be like a conspiracy theorist here. real things that have actually happened in canada so the government is trying to squeeze everybody into this into this funnel where if you make too much money and you had a great investment capital gains cough it up unless of course it's in your tfsa which by the way there's that 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 seems too good to be true in the long run i know the tfsa does have a cap on it in terms of how much you can contribute every single year uh, if you've already reached your limit but i feel like all these these tax-free incentives they're they're not i don't think in the long run i don't think they're going to be tax-free if it's a liberal government it just it feels like you can't do anything in Canada. You can't afford to do anything. Most people can't even afford to move out of the country or move into a different province or to move out of town. People just can't do anything. We're all locked. We're gridlocked. We're financially locked. And it could be significantly worse if this keeps up. But enough about uh, my opinions and stuff like that. Let's get into King Tax Federation and what this gentleman has to say right outside of Parliament about today's budget announcement. I just had to go through the budget so you don't have to. Let me tell you, it's bad, real bad. These massive deficits have sent interest charges soaring. Interest charges on the federal debt will cost taxpayers $54 billion this year. Okay, so interest charges on the debt will cost you, dear taxpayer, more than $1 billion every single week, which means that interest charges this year are costing taxpayers more money than what the federal government will send to the provinces in health transfer transfers. $54 billion hit just in interest charges on the debt this year. Now, the federal government is trying to frame this budget as fairness for every generation. Well, hold on a second. How is doubling the entire federal debt that the Trudeau government has done. How is that fair for Canadians' kids and grandkids who are gonna be hammered by massive tax increases if the government doesn't actually cut spending? Now, the deficit. This year's deficit, $40 billion. We're not in a pandemic. Why is the federal government borrowing $40 billion? And you guessed it, folks. There's absolutely zero plan, no plan to balance the budget. In fact, the best that this government is willing to do is, hey, wait a couple years and we'll bring down the deficit to $20 billion. It's absurd. If you were an individual and you were in this much debt and you owed your credit card company or line of credit or a bank this amount of money or anything of like, like any minor comparison to how much debt Canada is in, the bank would come and seize everything. But in this instance, it's the government that's in control of everything. And the whole plan is to tax and spend. You would think that with how massive, massively Canadians are taxed, we're taxed to death. One of the highest taxed countries in the world. You would think that our government would just be flourishing in all this cash, but no, they don't know how to spend it. They are not smart people. They are not business people. A country should technically be run like a business because that's what it is. It's the biggest corporation ever known to mankind. That's what a country is. You got people working for it. They contribute to taxes. A lot of people are under the impression taxation is theft. And when you come out with budgets like this, it validates everybody and you lose trust in the government. If you're a younger person watching this, or maybe if you're older and you, you have you know kids or grandkids that would be of age to watch this, chances are they won't be able to afford a home unless they already have one for many, many, many years to come because that's just the state of Canada is tax and spend. We don't get to spend our money. The government does on, on things that don't even work either. But let's take a look at Chrystia Freeland's freaking... Uh, tweet here budget 2024 fairness for every generation it, like whatever she says it's the opposite if she says things are good it's bad if she th says things are fair it's actually not so just keep that in mind as we go through this is a plan to build more homes faster make life cost less and create more good jobs and economic growth shared by all so in translation budget 2024 is not fair for every generation it's going to build less homes at a slow rate and make life cost more than you've ever seen seen and create worse jobs and it's going to tank the economy 
There you go. That's a perfect summary. Because every generation deserves a fair chance at success. In translation, because every generation will suffer because us liberals want everyone to suffer and eventually die a very painful death. Sorry if I'm coming across as like morbid or angry because to be honest, that's just how everyone who saw this budget 2024 live, I streamed it on one of my channels on Mr. Sunshine Live. It's just, it's, it's infuriating folks. And you're going to see as we go through these clips here. So let's get into, uh, I mean, this is a tweet from a pretty big account. I think it's got like 1.8 million followers on X Canada, increased capital gains tax on firms and individuals. So if you make money on anything, Canada is coming for it. You have Andrew Lawton from True North saying by 2028, the Liberal government will have spent $1.1 billion on combating hate according to the new budget. Yes, online hate speech is what they are doing. You can pay me $1.8 billion by the year 2028 and I will still hate liberals no matter what. It's absolutely insane. Breaky, Christian Freeland says they are um, they are helping the middle class by allowing more Canadians to move into basement or laneway housing. We're making it easier for Canadian homeowners to add a basement suite or a laneway house so middle class Canadians can be part of the housing solution too. Mr. Speaker, our work to build more homes faster across our country is quite literally an exercise in nation building, a true Team Canada effort. Look, if this was an actual good plan, if all of these things were true, if the, the Liberal government actually made things easier for Canadians, I would be the first person. I would be saying it off the top of the hills. Like, I, as painful as that would be, I'm not looking for confirmation bias. I'm not looking for the Liberals to, to say something so, so they open their mouths and I just hate on it. And most Canadians aren't. It just so happens that what they say and their actions that follow up with that, or in this case, they don't follow up, it just turns out to be malarkey. It's a bunch of horse crap and people are sick and tired of it. Like this pledge of announcing that they're going to build pretty much 4 million homes by the year 2031. Together, we are putting into action a plan to build nearly 4 million homes by 2031 and to unlock the door to the middle class for more young Canadians. Okay, so the reality with the Liberal government is they have a lot of red tape. Now, what does that mean? That's a buzzword. It's super annoying. I get it. It's repetitive. You hear it all the time. What that means is in order to build a house for a construction company or a developer company to come in and buy a plot of land or you know lease a plot of land, whatever it is, and start building homes so they can sell new construction, right? You see that all the time, 2024 house, you know, built by November, buy it now for under market value. And then when it eventually is built, it's worth, you know, 15% more than what the person paid for it. Those, those permits that are required to, to do that construction, they're, first of all, insanely expensive right now under the liberal regime, and they take so much time to get that approved, which is why you keep hearing red tape, because that's what it is. It's red tape around anything that needs to be done. Gatekeepers. You have to go to the city bylaws. You have to get provincial permits. You have to get federal permits. It just it goes on and on and on. So building 4 million homes by the year 2031... I highly doubt that. I mean, I don't think the liberals could build 4 million homes in 15 years. They are so slow and inefficient because the liberal government isn't about capitalism. It's not, you have a great way to make a product or sell something on the free market, go nuts. No, the, the liberal government wants socialism. They want, they want control over everything. And that's the difference between the liberals and the conservatives. Conservatives, they want to step out of the way. They just want the power and they want to step out of the way and say, here's here, let's try this, let's try that. But ultimately, let's let can Canada and Canadians be a bit more of a free market. Liberals don't want that. There's no such thing as capitalism anymore with a liberal government and it's pissing people off because if you're a developer company and you have the means to the, the the upfront startup money right to make all this stuff happen you can't just jump into the market and and build massive amounts of homes because you need to get all of these permits and you, 
it's annoying. It's annoying for everybody involved. And that all trickles down. All this logistical stuff trickles down onto you and I. You want to build or sorry, you want to buy a house? Well, it turns out that you can't buy a new house because new houses aren't being built and they're promising stuff that they're not going to follow through with this. Eight years ago, Justin Trudeau promised clean water and better infrastructure for like all of the indigenous communities in the North. And there's still brown guck that comes out of the taps. There's still in these indigenous communities. They don't even have a lot of roads going to these communities. So he's just promising things to appeal to people in the hopes that if they get you know, reelected that they'll follow through with those promises. But you've seen it time and time again that that's just not true and it's not happening. And people are fed up. And finally, you know, <laughs> there's been so much exposure about this that the, the majority of people are seeing it for what it is. It's lies and it's bullshit. Let's keep going here. Freeland acknowledges that the only, or that many say the only thing a government can do for an economic growth is to get out of the way. This is, this is probably my favorite clip of the whole budget announcement. Mr. Speaker, there are those who claim that the only good thing government can do when it comes to economic growth is to get out of the way. That's the conservatives going nuts. Capitalism works, socialism doesn't, all right? The government needs to get out of the way. They need to let private investors, private companies, the private sector do what they do best and establish the free market. The market will literally balance itself the way Freeland thinks the budget will. No, the market will. The free market will because there's always going to be somebody out there that's going to try and do it for cheaper and it's going to it's going to fix the costs. It's going to fix the costs of everything. And when the government gets involved, they build all these barriers and it just it it. It doesn't work and uh, you can take that theory and you don't have to use that just on housing. You can apply that to pretty much everything. The government, everything that the government, the liberal government touches, it, uh, it just doesn't work. It goes to waste. All right. This is when they announced that the Trans Mountain Pipeline was completed last week and Gil Bo, take a look at his face here. He, for those who don't know, he's an, a radical environmental activist who once upon a time climbed the CN Tower in an orange jumpsuit before he was an elected member of parliament. The final weld, it's known as the golden weld on a great national project, the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Yep. <laughs> He's not too happy about that. He is not too happy about that at all. We got another clip here, but liberals announced $60 billion in new spending. Let's take a look. We are making life cost less. We're driving the kind of economic growth that will ensure every generation of Canadians can reach their full potential. And we're making Canada's tax system more fair by ensuring that the very wealthiest pay their fair share. David, a heavy spending budget that was expected. Is there an overall theme that brings it together? Well, it is a scattershot budget uh, from a government that's behind in the polls, looking to have a little bit of something for everything. Uh, this is a 400 page document. It's stuffed with spending commitments, as I said, a little bit for everybody. But if there is a theme, Donna, it's this. It's a government that is trying to reach out to Canadians under the age of 45, and that would be your millennial and generation Z voters. The first 80 pages of Budget 2024 details how the government will spur the construction of nearly 4 million new homes within seven years. We are building more homes at a pace and scale not seen since after the Second World War. Making it more affordable for Canadians, especially younger Canadians, to rent and to buy a new home. There is more than $8 billion worth of... By the way, that 4 million homes within seven years, or nearly 4 million homes within seven years, that's 500, and it's probably backwards, 571,428 homes, give or take a couple in change, per year. 
I don't think the Liberal government has built 500,000 homes in the past five years or four years, and they're thinking that they're going to do that every single year. Yeah, right, man. Yeah, right. Of housing initiatives in the budget, which the government says is aimed at helping young Canadians achieve the middle class dream of owning a home. You know, in terms of an outlay of resources, you know, another something in eight billion dollars, approximately in new resources, is you know is relatively ambitious in this environment where we're still running with elevated deficits and debt. But there's a host of other items clearly aimed at younger voters. $500 million, for example, set aside for a youth mental health fund. And Finance Minister Christopher Freeland repeated the commitment for free birth control pills through the National Pharmacare Plan. And there's some non-monetary items, like new rules to control the price of concert tickets by cracking down on fraudulent resellers, or bringing in a new right to disconnect, preventing your boss from texting or emailing you after hours. All the spending initiatives add up to $57 billion over five years, a third of which will be offset by an increase in capital gains taxes. I think the government you know, wanted to do this additional. That's right. So the government is now coming out with a plan, which we have no real way to know how they're going to enforce it. And there's no logical way for this to actually be enforced. But if your boss calls, texts, or emails you after hours, a change being proposed in budget 2024, and did they say how much was set? $50 million or $500 million into this? Or was that the mental health thing? I, I, I don't know. There's so much happening right now. Could give Canadian workers the right to ignore that. It's absolutely insane that this is even a discussion I, I don't know man maybe just have people be nicer better people instead of literally per like what are you going to do if there's an opportunity to work extra hours overtime all of a sudden your boss can't message you what if the employee messages the the employer is now the employer prohibited by law of responding to the employee it doesn't make any sense the, they're throwing out all of these things to appeal to the woke new younger kids the new generations and they think oh my god all of these safe places oh my god all of these houses yeah the government cares about my emotions no they don't bro none of this makes any sense there's no way there is no way in hell of the government being able to give even landlords the ability to hit somebody's credit when they're when they're renting like even that program that they that they implied is going to be something that they're going to roll out or they didn't imply they said that that's going to be something that they're going to roll out right for renting now somehow you're going to it's going to be able to go towards your credit score well that doesn't make any there's no way to do that it doesn't make any sense you, what so now you didn't pay your 35 dollar phone bill and the landlord has the ability to now hit your credit in a negative way you really want to give people that ability it doesn't make any sense there's going to be personal information like sin number exchange it's just it, it, it's so insane unless i'm delusional unless i'm naive unless maybe i'm missing out on some information here i feel like i'm being gaslit like they're giving this this safe space bubble all these promises to younger generations in hopes that they can win them over with things that are literally not even possible it, it's it's literally not possible to do there's no algorithm there's no app there's no government program i can magically make these things happen and i can't believe i'm starting i'm st like morphing in to like my grandfather that was like so like against the government like there's oh i'm that older generation now right oh the, you can't trust the government none of these things make sense well it turns out that as you grow with age and you pay your bills and you have a mortgage and you have kids and you have a little bit more life experience and you've been around the block a couple times Turns out that these older people that have all this knowledge of the government is true. And the government is so stupid and incompetent that they don't know what the hell they're doing. And they give out false promises to literally try and farm votes. But I need to end this video before I keep going down this tangent because this is budget 2024 day. And I am going to go and have myself a beer. And it's going to probably cost me three times as much because the government is so damn good at taxing people. That's where I'm going to end this video.
video, folks. I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. What is your least favorite part about Budget 2024? Let me know down below. On your way out, I'd like to encourage you guys to smash like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.